Sup y'all, it's me, it's your boy Asmin Gold, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the shipyard. We're not just going to be talking about the shipyard, we're going to be using that kind of as the uh, flagship example of all of the other RNG, and RNG by the way stands for Random Number Generator, which is synonymous with randomness that's being added into World of Warcraft, and also into gaming in general. Now, you guys have told me, y'all have told me exactly how you feel about the shipyard in mostly capital letters, because you guys are pissed the fuck off, you guys hate the shipyard, and uh, for me personally, I don't really hate the shipyard a whole lot, but one thing I really don't like is that it makes you, you have to to do the shipyard in order to get your legendary ring. You have to get that Draenic C chart. And if you don't get the Draenic C chart, you don't get the legendary ring. And uh, you people might think, oh, well, you don't really need it. In six months from now, when the patch, patch 6.2, is, is invariably almost for certain still out, there's no new legendary ring, something you can get that's better than the legendary ring. Of course, there won't be. Um, the legendary ring, having the legendary ring, will be basically a requirement to joining raiding guilds. Like, if somebody doesn't have the legendary ring, they're going to get ruled out in terms of position, of course, because it's such a huge damage boost to the you know, if you don't have it, obviously you're setting yourself, you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage. And so that puts everybody who's raiding in any sort of real fashion, even LFR, uh, who, who like progresses along legendary quest line. Like I have friends and they really only do LFR, maybe some normals here and there. And even they're co uh, progressing along this legendary quest line because they have to in order to stay relevant with their guild and order to progress their character. And so everybody is kind of forced into doing the shipyard. Now I will tell you exactly uh, why a lot of people hate the shipyard. Now, uh, by the way, I also want to say something. Uh, requiring things that are not necessarily raiding in order to actually do, uh, you know, get a legendary item is not always a bad thing. But in this uh, circumstance, I think that if you didn't have the legendary ring requirement of getting the Draenic Sea Chart, really nobody would be doing uh, the shipyard because uh, the honest, uh, the honest truth is, is a lot of the missions and Blizzard has actually even said uh, that the missions in uh, in the shipyard are not really meant to be done at 100% because making them at 100% like buying all of the counters and everything like that is extremely resource uh, um, it costs a lot of resources and you really can't do that all the time and so you have to be sending your ships out at like 95% 92% 69% you know I sent my uh, my ships out on a Hellfire uh, Citadel uh, raid mission at 69% well I did get it okay I guess it's because 69 but you know I mean I was real happy about that but uh, honestly I'll tell you guys how I really felt now, if uh, this is the thing, like I'll explain kind of that way the shipyard works if people haven't really done it. Now, you build these ships and uh, they can have two different counters. Uh, they can counter two different abilities and uh, the type of ship also counters a different ability. And pretty much what these ships do is they go out and they go on missions for you and uh, they counter the different abilities and they bring back different stuff. And the problem here is that all the different abilities are in the previous, like in the follower missions, were able to be countered. But in the shipyard missions, there's something called like expert captain or season captain or something like that that's really not able to be countered so unless I, I think that there might be a possibility that you could get 100% with one of the Draenic Sea Chart missions but I'm not even uh, sure if that can happen and even making that happen to begin with is extremely uh, un unlikely because based on another set of RNG that has to do with uh, the type of ships that you roll and so you have to just keep rolling new ships in order to get like human or pandering crew and so this is another element of RNG before you actually even uh, send your ships on a mission you already have one element of RNG which is this type of crew that your ship has that you really have no control over again and so this is extremely frustrating for uh, for really anybody who's trying to actually get the shit done because uh, again you're just playing a fucking slot machine seeing if you're going to get the right thing now uh, the thing is here is that you can send your ships out on these missions and if your ships fail these missions that by the way again uh, were not actually even set up to be 100% uh, guaranteed most of the time your ships can be destroyed and so that means that you're actually being punished for doing something and uh, not succeeding at something that you didn't have control over completely succeeding at to begin with and so you're effectively set up to fail and so the way that I felt whenever I uh, completed my 69% Hellfire Citadel mission is if I com if I had failed it I would have felt like the game just fucked me over because that's really what it did it would have just fucked me over and it failed the mission and uh, then I lost my uh, my ships and so that's just complete failure and uh, obviously like how's how am I going to feel about that you know I've spent like all these days like gearing up my ships spent resources gearing them up and I just get them destroyed because I'm set up to fail right i mean who, who's really gonna have fun with that but um even uh with me succeeding it wasn't really i was like oh my god i feel so great now i it was just a relief and so both uh both outcomes, success and failure on the mission, uh, generate a stressful and a not fun experience for me. I, I don't really have fun uh, succeeding in the missions because, you know, it's always like, oh my god, I hope my ship doesn't get destroyed because Blizzard has set up a system where it's a possibility that my ship can get destroyed and I have no real way to combat that problem uh, outside of just waiting forever, spending a huge amount of resources, and you're basically punished for trying to uh, get 100% uh, um 
completion on this uh, on these missions and so uh, i really really don't like that now if you had an opportunity like the uh the the counters in um in beta used to only be 50 uh 50 garrison resources instead of 500 now if that was the case i wouldn't really hate the shipyards as much but it would still be pretty annoying because you have the expert captain and you can only have like eight ships and so it's not like you can just get a ton of different ships and eight ships is by the way in a uh, level two and i think in level three you can have 11 but <clears throat> Sorry, uh, either way, uh, you can't really have a whole lot of different ships to make sure that you have the counters available for everything. And so you're basically forced into sending them out into these, uh, you know, lower sh uh, percentage chance missions. And while, of course, you can wait and you can, you know, do this, uh, you know, wait, 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 it just takes a lot longer <clears throat> and for like the 92 and 95 percent missions you've got a pretty good chance of succeeding it's just whenever you do fail it just sucks right and so uh for me personally i do not really find it a very enjoyable experience and i don't think a lot of other people do either and i think that if it was not really required for the legendary ring then a lot of people really wouldn't do it now i do want to also expand on that as i said before it's just the uh, flagship uh example of all the other randomness that's been added into the game and i want to um uh, juxtapose the two uh i guess like situations of players rating and and ICC back in 2010 to, uh, compared to players rating now in like let's say Hellfire Citadel and the amount of uh, variables that go into actually acquiring the loot that you want. Now uh, in ICC uh, there are two variable there are two uh, options that can occur. Uh, you can either uh, you kill the boss. Let's say you kill uh, kill Lich King and uh, or let's kill no I mean probably like most people sucked back then. You kill Marogar. Okay, kill Marogar. Did Beer and Troll drop or not? Beer and Troll the burn or Bone Arbiter. Uh, it's really cool so uh, axe and um, everybody pretty much wanted it and a lot of people had it as well. Now, did it drop or not? Now, if it did drop and you get it, then you get it, okay? And if it didn't drop, then you don't get it, okay? So there's only really two variables that can occur. Now, you could drop and somebody else wins it, which is, of course, another variable, but really only two variables can occur with the loot uh, existing. It can either drop or not. Now, if you go ahead and you look at Hellfire Citadel, uh, let's just take a look at how many different variables we have. Now, of course, we have does the item drop or not? That still exists. On top of that, we have Warforged and is it not Warforged? And so then we have does it have a tertiary stat or does it not have a tertiary stat? And then also we have does it have a socket? Does it have a not have a does it not have a socket? And so those are six different uh, variables that can occur uh, in terms of if the loot will aid if you count uh, the loot dropping or not. And also on top of that, those uh, you know the socket, Warforged, and tertiary stat. Uh, those all can occur uh, simultaneously with each other to make the item even even better and so you have uh, it's easily over 10 different variables of the item dropping and uh, let's be real guys the reason that that people do this is to keep uh, that blizzard does it's not people with blizzard they do this is to keep us on the treadmill even longer and uh, you've been seeing this this has been creeping into pvp gear we've been uh, seeing this with ashran i made a big video i've actually talked about this twice in my videos because of how uh, appalling and ridiculous it is that uh players now uh, not only did it not have control over their success in pve and uh, you know in terms of uh, it's like because I mean, realistically you're never going to be able to get socketed warforged tertiary stat really anything uh, much less uh, everything and so on top of that, on top of that, now we have in PvP here, you have to actually complete a certain amount of Ashran wins. And uh, we've talked about that before, where uh, that's also pretty much random as well, depending on what server you play on. And then you get a box that might have the item that you need or might not. And so you can potentially go through an entire season with not getting the item that you need in order to get best in slot. And so they've created a situation where <clears throat> somebody can be set up to fail with no real, uh, they have no real control over their success. Now, there, I would say that there are good elements and bad elements, or good types and bad types of RNG. Now, uh, a good type of RNG uh, is, I would say, the bonus roll coin. Now, I bonus rolled a uh, chest off of uh, Manoroth today, Heroic Manoroth. That was awesome. I got it. I didn't really feel like very satisfied. I didn't feel like, oh man, you know, I'm so great because it was just a coin, right? And it's, again, another element of randomness that's been added into the game. And so we're seeing more and more and more of these. And so on top of that, uh, you know, we can go ahead and we can look at like the upgrade systems with the Baleful gear. Now, one thing that I do like is uh, sometimes if you identify a baleful item, uh, it can potentially have a plus 25 item levels up to 675, or it can just be 650. But uh, ultimately, it doesn't really matter because the end goal is going to be 695 with the Empowered Apexis Fragment. 
But, um, you know, if you take a look also at the Baleful Gear, you know, there's the possibility of it, uh, you know, you identify the Baleful Gear, and this is something with Diablo 3, and they've turned uh, a lot of, like, the loot in WoW into Diablo, uh, Diablo, it's going to call it, like, the Diablofication of, uh, of Warcraft loot, and uh, for me personally, I've really disliked it, because it really takes the, uh, you know, there used to be, like, kind of a clear set path of, like, okay, I get all of this gear, and then, you know, I'm going to pretty much have completed the raid tier or something like that, but now, because there are so many other, you know, like, uh, you know, fine print and variables, like with Warforge and Tertiary and, and uh, Sockets, there's really no way that you can ever actually finish the game. And I, I think that obviously it seems to me uh, that it's very obvious that they're doing this in order to keep people playing longer, keep people on the treadmill longer, because realistically, uh, it's going to take people, there are a lot of people who are motivated by progression, and so if they just had the pieces of gear drop in the instance like they did with ICC, uh, obviously people would go through the content a lot quicker, and um, then they might be uh, they might unsubscribe. So instead of creating a, a better path to progression, they've kind of created uh, all of these mini progression steps. You have to take like Warforge and Tertiary, and so there's always some sort of way that you can upgrade your character, and you're never quite really good enough. And um, also another thing that really bothers me about this is that it seems like these kind of things that are occurring are not really, uh, you know, they actually really kind of hurt the raiding atmosphere in a lot of ways. And so if two items drop and one person, like let's say bonus rolls a, uh, you know, a heroic warforge or mythic warforge weapon and the other person doesn't, uh, that other person is basically being set up to fail effectively by that other person's success. And, um, you know, you, you can look at it and say that, well, you know, that wouldn't really be fair if their guild wouldn't bring them in, you know, because like this other person has this better weapon and they can just outperform that other person. Um, you know, if both people play perfectly, uh, you know, the person with the better gear is going to do better. And, um, you know, of course, nobody's ever really playing perfectly, but realistically, people of equal skill, if somebody has better gear, they're just going to win. And, um, you know, I don't really think that that's fair. Uh, you know, like usually uh, back in the day, that was determined by like loot council or by rolling for the gear or something like that, where you really had kind of more of a fair chance and you weren't really being set up to fail by the game which is really what i what i think a lot of people don't like about the shipyard and uh, which is my biggest complaint again because that's a uh, element of like bad rng because um you know as i said before so you have to send i'm just gonna say this again because of how ridiculous it is i'm saying it again because of how absolutely fucking ridiculous it is and i even said that again um anyway so you have the ships you have the ships and so you build the ship it can maybe have a pandaren or human crew and the rest really don't fucking matter but you can have one of those two and if it doesn't then you probably need to re-roll the ship so you finally you get the right ships and you send them out on a mission that's like let's say 92 98 percent and you cannot realistically get to 100 percent so you cannot really get to 100 percent and then you fail this mission 92 or 98 percent chance mission and then your ships are destroyed and so you've been set up to fail and forced into this situation where your ships will be destroyed and you'll be punished for something you had no control over and i really don't think that uh that's like kind of the uh the negative aspects of RNG and uh, how I really think that RNG has kind of demoralized a lot of people uh, in terms of like what's really, you know, people don't really feel the same, uh, I guess, like need to like get the next gear, you know, get the gear because again, it's like, oh, it could always just be Warforge. It could always be, you know, always have a socket, it could always be socketed and Warforge. And so you never really have like that full satisfaction of getting, uh, you know, Beer and Troll or uh, Goren's Elk from, uh, from the Lich King or something like that. You never really get those opportunities now because there's always something that no, it could have it could have had this it could have had that and so there's no real way that you can actually ever really get off this uh the, you know this treadmill that you're put on and um you know the rng elements of the game like a lot of people have talked about and uh, said because somebody linked me a video about this on uh on twitter and the guy was talking about how uh, they were using a lot of the different elements that were used in like uh, behavioral conditioning with like a Skinner, like a Skinner box and everything like that. And uh, they were saying how this is like um, potentially unethical. Now, for me personally, I've always kind of had the feeling that everybody's kind of responsible for themselves. And so if they're, you know, getting themselves addicted to a game, uh, you know, is this really the game developer's fault? Not, not really. Now, at a certain point, you know, that could be reevaluated. But in almost all circumstances, in my opinion, if somebody's getting themselves addicted to the game or playing the game too much, it's because they're playing the game too much. It's not really the game developer's fault because somebody plays their game too much. Anyway, uh, I, I did want to kind of address that because this has been more of an issue uh, in gaming in general. I've I've been seeing this is about uh, Destiny, about Call of Duty, where like there are all of these random elements where you're uh, randomly rewarded, and the reward necessarily doesn't always necessarily reflect uh, the success. And so the uh, you know the I guess like the connection between like your high performance or good performance and also the reward of what you're receiving has been separated. And because of that, uh, you can see there, there's not really as much, uh, 
I guess like what's really the word for that? Uh, there's not as much motivation really to succeed and, and play well and be as motivated as people used to be because there's not really a guarantee or at least a partial guarantee like with ICC, it either drops or not, a partial guarantee that you'll actually get the reward that you've been trying for. And so I did really want to talk about this because I think it's a real issue and um, a lot of people have talked about this as well. And the shipyard is probably the, the pinnacle flagship example of, uh, you know, RNG gone wild and and, you know, you have the ship type. I've said, I've said it twice. You guys know, it's just, it's ridiculous. And um, you know, and and now we're at the point where players are being punished for losing at something that they're set up to lose at, or there is a possibility for them to lose at, and that possibility is engineered by the game developer. And I, I really don't think that that's fun. I don't think that it's fair, and I don't enjoy it. Now, I don't really know how you guys feel about it. Let me know, have I forgot about like some of the RNG elements of the game? You know, we've talked about the Ashcan boxes more than once. Uh, we've talked about Warforged and Tertiary stats more than once because, again, I find that these are really big issues and uh, they're a lot more subtle than a lot of people might think that they are. And uh, if nothing else, I really just don't like them. And so uh, let me know how you guys feel about all these different elements of RNG. Does this make you want to keep playing? This is like, you know, oh man, you know, Cataclysm's Edge Mythic dropped, but it wasn't Warforged. I better come back next week. Is that you? Is that how you feel? And I don't really mean to be patronizing with that. Is that really how you feel about things? Or, uh, or not and uh, also have you been demotivated by this and uh, how do you feel about random not random number generator rng or randomness in games in general or just in wow uh, i'm very curious because uh for me i hate it i do not like it at all and so uh, i'm curious to see what other people would think maybe some people who do like it and um just to kind of get inside their head you know just to know know exactly uh what's what's going on in, inside other people's heads because you, mean, you can't really can't really know that if if you're in your own head right and uh as it's kind of stupid but you guys i think you guys get the point you know it's, it's interesting to get other people's insight even if it's different from your own and so guys uh, i hope you enjoyed i hope you uh not really learn something i think we all kind of know what the fuck is going on but uh you know i i hope that now that you're more aware of what's really going on about this endless treadmill you know replayable content or it's a joke of replayable content and um you know i don't really know really what to do about it maybe uh just complain honestly that's why i'm doing complaining about it and so I don't know. A lot of people complain about the shipyard, and so they haven't, they've done a couple changes, but nothing really, you know, that big. Hopefully they'll, uh, hopefully they'll change their minds sooner than later. But we'll see. Thanks for watching, and like, comment, subscribe.